dear Ambassador Fan, uh, General Secretary Jen, dear ambassadors, friends, guests, scholars, it is my pleasure to see you all here today. We are celebrating 14th anniversary of establishment of diplomatic affairs between Armenia and China. Now it is time for rethinking academic, political, and economic relations between our two states. At first, we will have opening remarks by our keynote speakers. After, we will continue our work in five plus five format. It means that five Armenian scholars and five Chinese scholars will introduce their research on different aspects of bilateral relations and will make concrete recommendations on strengthening relations between Armenia and China. I want to emphasize that this event is a good example of cooperation between Armenian, Chinese scholars and diplomats in the field of academic diplomacy. As it is organized and initiated by the Armenian, China and Russian Council for Political and Strategic Research in partnership with World Socialist Institute of Renmin University of China. And it is supported by the Embassy of People's Republic of Ar uh, China in Armenia. Therefore, at first, I want to thank Ambassador Fan Yong for his support and thanks go to my good friend uh, and colleague, uh, Dr. Yun Tian Zhen. By the way, it is already the third time uh, with a uh, third international conference for uh, organizing with China and the Russia Council for Political and Strategic Research. Uh, cooperates with Ambassador Fan Yong. Dear Ambassador, thank you for your great interest on academic work. And thank you that every time you are having a speech and introducing Chinese foreign policy. The floor is yours. Please deliver your keynote speech. So good afternoon. Thank you very much. See, I'm wearing a hat that to memorize this special day. Thank you. Well, we have our wrecked uh, Davinian arriving right in time before my start. <laughs> Thank you, Secretary General Chen and uh, uh, Dr. Robert Zagazalian, Dr. Zheng Yuntian, Dr. Mayor Zhao Jiang, and uh, especially I'm very happy to, to meet my colleague, Ambassador from Kazakhstan. It's my great pleasure to have you all here and Balivutes. Thank you very much. I'm very pleased to join this seminar, China, Armenia, rethinking 30th anniversary of the establishment of diplomatic relations. And congratulations to the 30th anniversary to all our partners and friends. And thanks to the organizers of this seminar, China Eurasia Council for Political and Strategic Research of Armenia and World Socialism Institute of Renmin University of China. And I share also thank to all the experts and the participants for your long-term attention and focus on China's development and support for China-Armenia cooperation. The Chinese embassy in Armenia is more than happy to support these kind of events. And I'm looking forward to your inspiring insights and sharing views on the future development of China-Armenia relations. China and Armenia, our people's friendly exchange could be traced back to the ancient Silk Road times. For a good example, many historians still believe that great Mamikonian families of Armenia they were the descendants of a famous Chinese hero in the history of Three Kingdoms period in China. Since 1991, the diplomatic relations was officially established. The china armenia relations have maintained a sound momentum of healthy and stable development and have made a series of important achievements. The mutual political trust between the two countries has reached a new height. We have frequent exchange of high level visits. We firmly support each other on issues concerning the major issues, interests of each other. Jointly defend the legitimate rights and interests of both countries as well as the other developing countries. We contribute positively to the practice of multilateralism. 
the improvement of global governance and maintenance of international order with concrete actions. The pragmatic cooperation between the two countries is witnessing a new development. Armenia supports Ch actively China with the Belt and Road Initiative. China has been the second largest trading partner of Armenia for many years, if we're counting by countries. The content of bilateral economic and trade cooperation has been continuously in enriched. Some key cooperation projects, which are playing important roles in promoting Armenian economic development and improving people's li livelihood, have been implemented smoothly in Yerevan, but also other regions. The cultural and people-to-people -people exchanges between the two countries have a new look. Learning Chinese is becoming more and more popular in Armenia. More and more Armenian young people are keen to learn Chinese and eager to understand Chinese culture. They will surely become the inheritors of our traditional friendship. We appreciate that Armenian sent a delegation to the 2022 Beijing Winter Olympic Games and worked with China to defend the true Olympic spirits with practical actions and opposed vigorously on the temp an attempt to politicalize the sports. Confronting with the epidemic of COVID-19, China and Armenia stand side by side and support each other. That shows a profound spirit of together in the same boat and helping each other. The epidemic will not block our traditional friendship that over 2000 years. It could only bring our hearts closer and build the faith stronger and defeat the epidemic. Over the past 30 years, since the establishment of the diplomatic relations between China and Armenia, a rapid development of bilateral relations was made with some reasons. First is mutual respect. The two countries respect each other's choice of developing paths, accommodate each other's major interests and concerns, and firmly support each other against the major challenges, such as the instability in the world and the region and the COVID-19 pandemic. Second is win-win cooperation. The two countries adhere to free and open economy, and doors are widely open to welcome each other's enterprises, actively promote practical cooperation in various fields, and force the economic development respectively by expanding cooperation. Third is inclusiveness and learning from each other. China and Armenia, we are both ancient civilizations. The two countries contribute to deepen, continue to deepen culture and people to people exchanges, promote exchanges and mutual learnings between civilizations, enhancing mutual understanding and promoting amity between the peoples. Ladies and gentlemen, dear friends, today the world is facing the combined impacts of great change unseen in a century and the COVID-19 pandemic and a period of new turbulence and transforma transformation is approaching. The existing conflicts and new risks are intertwined, intertwined and accumulated. The uncertainty and instability has been increased significantly. Under the new circumstances, one important issue for us to think about in depth is how to further deepen and expand this existing well-nurtured china armenian relations. In our view, we can work together in the following three aspects. First is to, uh, is to en enhance political mutual trust, upholding the pr principle of mutual respect, equality and mutual benefit and win-win cooperation. Both sides could deepen our traditional friendship, firmly support each other in pursuing a developing development path and suit our respective conditions. Firmly safeguard the international system with the United Nations at the core and the international order underpinned by international law, jointly cope with the global challenges, practice true multilateralism and promote the building of a community with a shared future for mankind. Second, expand practical cooperation. China is accelerating the establishment of a new development pattern of due circulation, which will have domestic circulation as the mainstay, while the domestic and international circulations reinforcing each other, and aims to build a new system to a higher level open economy. 
The Armenian government also drawn up a five-year development plan or blueprint. Our two sides need to seek more synergies of our development strategies and policies, bring the political cons consensus into concrete actions, convert mutual recognitions to practical outcomes, and promote high quality belt and road constructions and cooperation. At the United Nations Assembly, President Xi, Xi Jinping raised the proposal of Global Development Initiative. This is another important public product for China, for, of, that China provides to the international community. And Armenia, as a good friend, is welcome to participate in. Let's work together for a stronger, greener, and healthy global development. And third, intensify the cultural and people-to-people -people exchanges. President Xi once said that the world we live is diverse and colorful. Diversity makes the human civilization what it is. Our two sides should actively expand cooperation in education, culture, media, young, youth, and other fields. Foster multi-interactive pattern of culture and people-to-people -people exchange and bring our two people's ties closer we also hope that all experts and scholars from both of our countries may work together, consolidating the mutual exchange and cooperation of the think tanks, providing more intellectual support for the development and China-Armenia relations. So after 30 years of development of joint constant hardworking China-Armenia relations today reached the historical height, which is also a starting point for a new journey deepening the traditional friendship between the, our two countries and bringing more outcomes is are not only in the fundamental interest of our people, but also in line with the development trend of the times. So I firmly believe that with the unremitting joint efforts of our two sides, China Armenia relations are determined for a better and happier future. I thank you all for your attention and once again, thanks for the organization for this seminar. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Dear Ambassador, thank you very much. Dear guests, now I want to give a floor to Dr. Professor Armen Darpinyan who has developed Chinese studies in Armenian Russian University in a higher level. Actually, he is playing a very active role in academic diplomacy. By the way, last year, together with Professor Darpinyan and by the support of Ambassador Fan Yong, uh, we have organized first China and Russia conference where 62 speakers from 23 countries attended. Dear Professor Darpinyan, please, the floor is yours. Thank you, uh, dear Dr. Sayakyan. It's my privilege and pleasure to welcome everybody and welcome you, Your Excellency, Mr. Ambassador, Ambassadors, and uh, distinguished uh, audience. Uh, it's very good that the Chinese and the Armenian activity is intensifying. And uh, it's very pleased to notice that. And we are celebrating today the 30th uh, anniversary of our diplomatic relations. Uh, it's important, of course, but, but we have thousands of years of human relations between Armenians and Chinese, and we are two ancient nations, as Mr. Ambassador mentioned. And we, we do have many things to share together and to share with the world. And uh, unfortunately, we cannot say that the world is sensitive towards this understanding of needs for sharing the values of cooperation, values of mediation, to understand differences. What we have to learn from Chinese experience and Chinese history is the understanding of difference and respecting the difference. And this is what is the main point of the conflicts it's existing now, nowadays in the world. The world in its majority does not understand differences. And this is way, this is, this, is, uh, this is where the Chinese practice, the Chinese history, the Chinese experience 
should and could be used and should be used. And also, we here in Armenia want to, of course, regain our mediatory functions and mission uh, to, to serve the world trade, to be an intermediary in, 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 in cooperation, in bringing East and the West together. And we are in the crossroad and we have to regain this, uh, this way and this function and mission, if you wish, as, as, a, as, a, as a crossroad. Um, Mr. Ambassador, I think that uh, in the perspectives of uh, our relations, uh, state relations of uh, China and Armenia, we have to consider uh, uh, the boosting of investment activities uh, here in the region, uh, supporting our infrastructural developments, road, develop, road construction, railway construction, to bring Armenia more and more into the regaining of that function, which I mentioned. And of course, having these uh, thousands of years of being together. And uh, there was a joke just on, uh, in the beginning of uh, uh, this establishing procedure, and uh, I was the one who was participating in that negotiations. And Chinese, the China was the, the 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 one of the first countries with whom Armenia established that relations. We have the joke that together we have uh, one billion five hundred million and three million of people. So we 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 are. We have to be very forceful in providing uh, this uh, role of being intermediaries in providing cooperation, coexistence, and in respecting differences. This is my message to the conference. Uh, again, Dr. Saakan, my uh, welcoming uh, and thankful uh, words to you for organizing such an event with so much young people uh, as an audience. I think we have to be closer to each other. And uh, I am very happy that we have established Chinese studies in the university. And I might say that there are uh, uh, many young Armenians speaking Chinese. And this is a great pleasure to me as a rector of that university. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you. Dear Dr. Professor Dapinia, thank you very much. Dear all, I want to introduce you, uh, General Secretary of China's Committee on Good Neighborliness, Friendship and Cooperation of Shanghai Cooperation Organization. Ms. Jen Wei, we cooperated with her already two years, as on August uh, 11, 2020, China and Russia Council for Political and Strategic Research, and Chinese Committee of Shanghai Cooperation Organization signed Memorandum of Understanding. I also want to mention that General Secretary Chen Wei is a champion in the field of public diplomacy. She is organizing many important cultural events for participant countries of Shanghai Cooperation Organization and always inviting Armenia and Armenian participants as well. Dear General Secretary, the floor is yours, please. Thank you, Mr. Саакян, уважаемые ученые эксперты, дорогие друзья, добрый день. Мне очень приятно с вами встречаться в онлайн-режиме и вместе отмечать 30-летие установления дипломатических отношений между Китаем и Арменией. 6 апреля представитель ГНР господин Си Дзиньпин и президент Армении господин Хачатурян обменялись поздравлениями по этому случаю. Глубоко убеждена, что сегодняшняя конференция вносит вклад в развитие китайско-армянских отношений в новую эпоху. Как гласит древняя китайская мудрость, человек достигает зрелости в 30 лет. Мы видим, что за 30 лет выросло целое поколение, приверженное углублению дружбы между Китаем и Арменией и играет важную роль в социальном развитии двух стран.
как бы ни менялась международная обстановка, мы всегда друг друга понимаем, уважаем и поддерживаем. От совместного продвижения инициативы «Один пояс, один путь», руководствуясь принципом совместных консультаций, совместного строительства и совместного использования, до консолидации в борьбе с эпидемией и реализации высококачественного развития. Мы всегда стоим вместе и идем вперед рука об руку. Каков секрет китайского армянского дружественного сотрудничества? Год удачи, неустанное стремление к общим ценностям всего человечества. Это мир, развитие, равенство, справедливость, демократия и свобода. Во-первых, Содействовать миру и развитию с высокой ответственностью перед народами. Улучшение благосостояния народов двух стран всегда является общим стремлением Китая и Армении, а также и целью нашего сотрудничества. Мы вместе укрепляем дружбу, передаем ее из поколения в поколение, способствуем взаимному обучению между цивилизациями и стараемся относить новый вклад в региональное развитие. Мы постоянно раскрываем потенциал и развиваем практическое сотрудничество, что добиваются новых результатов и приносят пользу народам двух стран. В то же время Китай и Армения вместе со странами ШОС настаивают на разрешении разногласий и конфликтов только мирным путем, содействию Развитию при способствовании миру, обеспечении мира благодаря развитию, что предоставляет полезные практики для решения широко распространенных делем безопасности в международных отношениях. Во-вторых, содействовать равенству и справедливости с высокой ответственностью по отношению к международному сообществу. Прискорбно что на европейском континенте вновь разгорается война. Представитель КНР Сидинки выступает за общую, всеобъемлющую, основанную на сотрудничестве и устойчивую концепцию безопасности. Факты доказали, что данная концепция научная, справедливая и соответствует народным чаяниям. Европейские страны следуют отстаивать принцип стратегической независимости, а США и НАТО следуют вместе вести диалог с Россией, чтобы разобраться и в истинной причине украинского кризиса. Для достижения прочного мира и стабильности необходимо учитывать разумные интересы безопасности всех сторон, а не поощрять групповую конфронтацию и абсолютной безопасности одной стороны. Были доставлены несколько партий гуманитарной помощи для Украины из Китая. Позиция Китая по Украине объективно, справедлива и находится на стороне мира и правильной стороне истории. Третьих, продвигать демократию и свободу с высокой ответственностью перед будущим человечеством. Мы видим, что демократия сама по себе многообразна и не существует единой универсальной модели. Мы понимаем и уважаем путь развития, выбранный самостоятельно народами всех стран в соответствии со своими национальными условиями. С момента своего создания Коммунистическая партия Китая прибержена системе демократического централизма и постоянно совершенствует эту систему в течение последних 100 лет. В этом году в Китае состоится 20-й Всекитайский съезд Компартии Китая. По руководству КПК Китай осуществляет народную демократию во всем процессе, повышает благосостояние народа и устранил абсолютную бедность. Китай и Армения имеют долгую историю и великолепную культуру. 
мы очень ценим, храняем свои цивилизации. Прилагая неуклонные усилия к развитию китайско-армянских отношений в новую эпоху, мы подчеркиваем важность солидарности и сотрудничества и твердо защищать общие ценности всего человечества. Вместе с народами стран, расположенные вдоль пояса и пути, мы привержены содействию построению сообщества единой судьбы человечества и глобального сообщества развития. Хотела бы еще раз благодарить всех участников конференции. Желаю конференции полного успеха и всем участникам крепкого здоровья, счастья и благополучия. Спасибо за внимание. Dear General Secretary, thank you very much. Dear uh, colleagues, it is our honor that uh, Vice Minister, Deputy Minister, Mr. Arthur Martirosian is here with us. He is the uh, Deputy Minister of Ministry of Education, Science, Culture and Youth. Please, the floor is yours. Hi, everyone. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, I want to welcome everyone. So I want to congratulate um, uh, everyone, uh, dear Ambassador, Your Excellency, dear speakers, organizers, and dear guests and friends. Uh, it's really my uh, pleasure and privilege to speak here uh, on behalf of our Ministry of Education, Culture, Science, Culture and Sport and uh, personally and congratulate all of us on this very nice occasion, 30th anniversary of the diplomatic relations between Armenia and the People's Republic of China. Of course, uh, formally, when we speak about diplomatic relations, it's we just have 30 years. But I know by Chinese measures, especially 30 years, it's very small. And I can proudly say that at least as it comes to culture and education, our relations go back for thousands of years. And yes, uh, like not even uh, centuries, but thousand years. And we have many, many records in our history with uh, very direct Chinese connections, even though uh, our countries are situated kind of a little bit far away from each other. I can say that uh, after the independence of Armenia from uh, 1991, so during this 30 years, the relations between friendly country to Armenia with uh, People's Republic of China, they were only developing and embracing new and new sectors. I can say that we have a special project that is about the exchange of students, and we are very thankful to the China for enabling uh, us uh, with the Armenian uh, students. Uh, to continue their studies in higher educational, in the best higher educational institutions of China, come back and support, you know, with the with their knowledge to the development of our country, to the uh, to act as an active workplace, labor force, and so on. We also do many, many educational and cultural events, and the numbers are increasing year by year. Uh, I would want I want here also to highlight the role of the Confucius Institute in Armenia. Uh, the special role uh, I want to emphasize the Armenian Chinese School of uh, Amity, Aichina Kambari the Pros, that is really a very nice bridge uh, connecting two countries and the continuous support of China and uh, Mr. Ambassador, the embassy to for its functioning. Also, uh, we are having uh, cultural events I mentioned, and uh, my colleagues have mentioned here a particular thing. When in 2019, we were celebrating, uh, we were hosting here Chinese days in Armenia. They were really, everyone was impressed with the nasty, and um, I don't even know the right word with the charm of the uh, performance art of Chinese artists. And uh, so
So uh, now as F FYI, we are also uh, in the process of signing a new uh, agreement already in the sector of uh, uh, translating literature, which I'm sure this time will help uh, uh, the Armenian uh, audience to read, the, to like get acquainted with the Chinese literature and respectively for the Chinese, big Chinese audience to read our, you know, historical as well as the classic as well as contemporary writers. So uh, this much, I really want to once again uh, reiterate that we are very pleased with the scope of the cooperation and we we are only for the uh, holding the position or to develop this cooperation as much as possible and we look forward for new projects and initiatives to come through and uh, once again thanks many thanks to the organizers it's really great that we are not just having a performance but we are also having a scientific uh, event uh, dedicated to the 30th anniversary, which comes once again, uh, give us, um, you know, an opportunity serving as a platform for us to brainstorm, reflect, also uh, come up with new ideas uh, that would uh, comprise the bigger agenda of Armenia-China cooperation. Thank you. Dear Deputy Minister, thank you very much for your interesting uh, speech. Dear all, I want to introduce you Dr. Robert Azarian, Director of the Institute of Oriental Studies of National Academy of Sciences. We have established cooperation well before signation of Memorandum of Understanding on May 10, 2021, between China and Russia Council for Political and Strategy research and uh, Institute of Oriental Studies. We have organized together two international conferences on China and uh, rethinking China's foreign policy special course for Armenian young specialists. Dear Dr. Hazarian, please, the floor is yours. Thank you, Dr. Sawakian. Honor, honorable Ambassador, Honorable Professor Darpinian, Honorable Dr. Saakian, distinguished conference participants. First of all, I would like to thank the organizers of the conference for inviting me to participate in this important event. The centuries old Armenian Chinese relations need to be studied and re evaluated now more than ever. And we can also state that National Academy of Sciences of the Republic of Armenia has made a significant contribution to this important task. The Academy has established long-term effective scientific relations with the scientific centers of China. The scientists of our countries have been doing a great job to strengthen and develop those relations through mutual visits, conferences, and joint work. We have common approaches in different scientific directions, which is a good reason for us to deepen scientific ties and make scientific policy one of the practical platforms for strengthening and developing the ties between our peoples and countries. This international conference once again demonstrates the importance of studying and analyzing the centuries old state or oriented historical experience of China for the Armenian society. I would like to emphasize the important role played by China Eurasia Council for Political and Strategic Research and its head director, Mayor Sayakian, in organizing and holding this conference. The Institute of Oriental Studies has years of effective experience of scientific cooperation with this organization. China Eurasia Council for Political and Strategic Research and, and the Institute of Oriental Studies have been cooperating for five years. In 2018, together with Dr. Sayakian, we organized the special course, Rethinking Chinese Foreign Policy and the inter International Conference Eurasian Studies in Modern China and Eurasia. Last year, the Institute of Oriental Studies signed a Memorandum of Understanding with China Eurasia Council for Political and Strategic Research. The goal is to continue and promote cooperation in academic, informational, educational, and other fields. 
As an example of that cooperation, I can mention the international, uh, another international conference held last year by our two organizations at the National Academy of Sciences, dedicated to the centenary of the establishment of the Chinese Communist Party. It was attended by dozens of specialists from around the world. Chinese studies is one of the most important scientific directions at the Institute of Oriental Studies, where the Institute has great achievements. At the same time, China Eurasia Council for Political and Strategic Research, in particular its head, Mayor Saakian, also has a significant contribution to the development and strengthening of this field in Armenia. In this regard, it is very important that such institutions in Armenia join uh, joined forces. The combination of our efforts and work can serve the further development of this field and will create prospects for new cooperation. We welcome this important event, wish productive work to all the participants and congratulate our two states and peoples on the 13th anniversary of the establishment of diplomatic relations. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Azarian. Dear all, I want to represent good friend of mine, Dr. Yun Tian Zhen, director of World Socialism Institute of Renmin University of China. We have co-organized this Armenia-China Forum. Dr. Zhen is great scholar and co-author of the China and the Russia, Rethinking Cooperation and Contradiction in the Era of Changing World Order book, which we have published months ago. Three years ago, uh, he was in Yerevan for delivering speech during the second China and the Russia conference. They are Dr. Jim, please, the floor is yours. Thank you, Mr. Sahakian, for your kind introduction. Your Excellency Ambassador Fen Yong, uh, Professor Amin Darbin Yang, Secretary General Zhen Wei, Director Robert Gazar Yang, dear colleagues, distinguished guests and friends, it's a privilege to address this conference dedicated to the 30th anniversary of the establishment of sino armenian diplomatic relations. 30 years ago, when Armenia just gained its independence, China was undergoing a spasm of economic reforms and social transition. Both countries have preserved and overcome many hardships to take their rightful place in the international arena. 30 years later, while the world is still recovering from the pandemic recession, both China and Armenia have accomplished remarkable progress. We achieved a significant milestone in 2015 with the signing of the Memorandum on Promotion of Cooperation in Building the Silk Road Economic Belt. Together, China and Armenia have fostered a broad and strong relationship that promotes peace and prosperity in the region. As a result of the 30 years of cooperation, we are proud to have earned the friendship of the people of Armenia. My own affinity with Armenia began in 2018, when I met Dr. Sahakian for the first time with the introduction of my Armenian student, Araxia Nasisian. In November 2019, I was invited to attend the second China Eurasia Conference. During my stay in Yerevan, I had the honor to visit uh, Yerevan State University, which had just celebrated its 100th anniversary. I was also granted the opportunity to give a lecture in Russian Armenian University, where I encountered many renowned scholars from all over the world. I will never forget the spectacular view I saw in Lake Savan, nor will I forget the smiling faces of Armenian people. It was their warm hospitality and friendly spirit that made this visit a treasured memory for a lifetime. While COVID-19 disrupts regular field trips and offline conferences, people-to-people -people exchanges between our two countries have never come to a halt. So far, we've managed to hold a number of online events. For the year of uh, 2021 only, we celebrated the 100th anniversary of the foundation of CPC. The publication of our book, China and Eurasia, Rethinking Cooperation and Contradictions in the Era of Changing World Order, and held the third China-Eurasia Conference. Through these activities, 
our friendship continues to grow and prosper. I would like to take a minute to acknowledge Dr. Sakyang's persistent efforts and tremendous contributions to the success of these great events. Dr. Sakyang, you are somebody whom young scholars should all look up to. Thank you for what you've done. I would also like to express my deepest gratitude to China Eurasia Council for political and strategic research and embassy of the People's Republic of China in the Republic of Armenia. Without their unselfish support, these activities would have been impossible. Today also marks the first collaboration between two academic institutions, China Eurasia Council and our World Socialism Institute of Renmin University of China. Renmin University founded in 1937, is one of the top universities in China with so much prestige in social and political sciences. We genuinely welcome Armenian friends to visit our campus once the travel restrictions are lifted. I strongly believe that this conference co-organized by our two institutions will be very promising and fruitful. And I sincere hope there will be more and closer cooperation between us in the future. 30 years is a long time, but also just the beginning. The Chinese sage Confucius once said, one should be able to establish himself at the age of 30. At this inflection point, my vision of Sino-Armenian relations for the next 30 years and beyond is an optimistic one, one that will continue to be built on the basis of sincerity, mutual trust, and mutual benefit. Thank you very much. Shnora Kurzin. Dear keynote speakers, thank you once again for delivering your important ideas. In the era of multiplex world order, it is important uh, that Armenia and China develop their relations. China is a superpower which is projecting a Russian economy. Armenia is a fast growing state with its potential in the uh, Russian Economic Union. Taking into consideration the fact that the Russian Economic Union's member states and China agreed to harmonize Belt and Road Initiative with the Russian Economic Union, it is possible to find ways for improving cooperation in economic, technological, and our fields. Thank for coming to panels, Armenian and Chinese scholars will try to recommend several steps for uh, strengthening cooperation in bilateral and multilateral levels. By the way, Ambassador Fan Yong, dear guests, we are going to make Armenia China, China Forum annual event. So hopefully the, this day will also stand historical as we are all here in this hall together establishing new platform for academic diplomacy. Therefore, I want to congratulate all of us in this beginning, which we serve for strengthening bilateral relations between Armenia, Armenian and Chinese civilizations.